Today is the day that we look into the final three drawers of the tool cabinet, if you catch my drift. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the tool of the day. Today, we're talking about drifts. And a drift is really nothing more than a tool that defines the inside of the hole. After the hole is punched, wrapped, forge welded, however you create the, the space, drifting it helps give it exactly the size and shape that you want. And I have these last three drawers full of drifts. These are the heaviest drawers in the tool cabinet. They're the ones that keep the cabinet from floating away. Most of the drifts have to do with tool forging, since that's what I do so much of. I have special drifts for axes and tomahawks and adzes. This particular drift does a typical single bit camp hatchet or something of that sort, and it's a long drift so that I can hold on to it while I'm forging or work under the power hammer. And I tend to like these longer drifts just for that reason. This is the one that we used on the Pulaski, so it's for a double bit style axe. Another, another style axe. These all in the video are going to look pretty much the same. There's not a lot of difference here. This one is slightly smaller than it in the front. It's teardrop, but it's not a pointy teardrop. And that's more of a Viking style axe that I drift. This one's just for a great big round. Nothing real special about that. This one actually is more of a Bic, and we'll talk about Bics later. This hangs, sets in the hardy hole of the anvil or locks in the vise so that you can forge the back of the pole down on an axe. But it fits in the drawer with the drifts because it's related. An inch and three quarter tapered round drift for doing froze. And some of these drifts are so big, they have to go in here corner to corner. So it's can be tough to get them all back in here sometimes. If I get any more, I'm going to have to make another set of drawers. And again, these are mostly drifts for axes. Just different things I've tried at different times. Some of these are antiques. That's one I just got in a box of Stuff somebody salvaged somewhere says, thought you might like to like this stuff. So that's all a lot of these are. Now, while I like the really long drifts, sometimes a little short drift or a slug type drift is real handy. And if you're working under a hydraulic press or a power hammer, then these are much better so that you can actually drive them in. You need a bolster under it so you don't upset it against the anvil of the power hammer. But I have quite a number of these as well. Just huge numbers of drifts. Like I say, some of these I've made, some of them I, I made and decided to make a different style because I didn't like it. Some of them are found. A few of them are store bought. These are cast ductile iron drifts, tomahawk drifts, hammer drifts. I have two sizes of hammer drifts. I think there's a Two sizes of tomahawk drifts in here. Lots of drifts. This is a matching set left and right to do single bit hewing hatchets. So one would go from the top and one from the bottom because you can't, you want an asymmetric eye, so you can't use the same drift in both places. Smitty the shop cat catches my drift, don't you? And just more of the same. Various tapered round drifts for round holes. The shorter drift for froze. The bigger one is much better to use. Square drifts. Various flat drifts. A lot of these are just made from mild steel. They're for special projects. I don't use them very often. So mild steel works okay for some of these little ones. Most of the others are all made out of either 4140 or S7. 
a nice octagonal drift. All sorts of things here. Some people ask what the difference between a drift and a punch is. This thing's really supposed to be a punch, but it's been so worn it's rounded over now, and it's used under the hydraulic press. And it does do some drifting. But this is the drift that finishes the eye, so this gets it close, but this is more precise and does not have to use this punch. I can use a regular slotted punch for punching the same eye, which I frequently do right here at the anvil, and it doesn't do any drifting at all. It just creates a hole, and then the drift creates the size and the shape of that hole. On the other hand, a simple round punch, a tapered punch, or a tapered square punch or some other shape, it's quite easy to use this as a drift. It punches the hole the size you want, but if you need a little bigger hole, you can just drive it in further and use it as a drift. So they can be the same thing, but in most cases I find that I want a specific drift because it's easier to do that than it is to try and make something that is both a punch and a drift. Plus the drifts get a lot of abuse, they get a lot hotter in use, and therefore the ends would wear out much faster than a punch end does and that allows your drifts to, to not be tempered quite as well. Well, that's a look at most of the drifts that we have in the shop. The hinge eye drifts I showed you earlier because they're in the top drawer of the chest, so you can go back and look at that for that little tiny bit of information on hinge eye drifts. But rest assured, we will be using more drifts in future projects, and that's where you really start to understand what a drift is and isn't. This is just an introduction to some of these tools and a look through the tool cabinet. The other day I mentioned that you can make handles for the tool cabinet if you'd like, because some of you don't like my store-bought handles. And if you're one of those that would like to do that, I really do appreciate the gesture. It's a great thing to do. Sounds like a lot of fun, and it seems like more people are interested than I really thought would be. So I will put a shipping address, or my mailing address for a post office box, in a pinned comment down below. And you can look at that pinned comment and get the address. And after a while, I'll probably take that off of there because I don't know if my address needs to be on a bunch of YouTube videos for years and years to come. In the meantime, Smitty the Cat says, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, then get out to the shop, make something, be safe, wear your safety glasses. We need to get some cat-sized safety glasses. And we'll see you for the next one.